After performing foot care, the nurse checks the medical record and discovers that the patient has a foot disorder caused by a virus. Which condition did the nurse most likely observe? A. Corns B. A callus C. Plantar warts D. Athlete's foot. Answer C. Plantar warts rationale. Plantar warts appear on the sole of the foot and are caused by the papillomavirus. Corns are caused by friction and pressure from ill-fitting or loose shoes. Athlete's foot tinea pedis is a fungal infection and can spread to other body parts. A callus is caused by local friction or pressure. A patient has scaling of the scalp. Which term will the nurse use to report its finding to the oncoming staff? A. Dandruff B. Alopecia C. Pediculosis D. Serostomia. Answer A. Dandruff rationale. Dandruff is scaling of the scalp that is accompanied by itching. Pediculosis lice infestation resides on scalp attached to hair strands. Eggs look like oval particles. Similar to dandruff, alopecia is hair loss or balding. Xerostomia is dry mouth. Ticks are small gray-brown parasites that burrow into the skin and suck blood. Mr. Gray is a 19-year-old patient in the rehabilitation unit. He is completely paralyzed below the neck. The most appropriate bath for Mr. Gray is 1. Partial bed bath 2. Complete bed bath 3. Six bath four, tepid bath. Answer two, complete bed bath. Rationale, a bath that is administered to a totally dependent patient in the bed. All of the following will help maintain skin integrity in older adults except one, environmental air that is cold and dry, two, Use of warm water and mild cleansing agents for bathing. 3. Bathing every other day. 4. Drinking 8 to 10 glasses of water a day. Answer 1. Environmental air that is cold and dry. Rationale. The condition of the skin depends on the exposure to environmental irritants with frequent bathing or exposure to low humidity. The skin becomes very dry and flaky. When preparing to give complete morning care to a patient, what would the nurse do first? 1. Gather the necessary equipment and supplies. 2. Remove the patient's gown or pajamas while maintaining privacy. 3. Assess the patient's preferences for bathing practices. 4. Lower the side rails and assist the patient with assuming a comfortable position. Answer 3. Assess the patient's preferences for bathing practices. Rationale. Each patient has individual desires and preferences about when to bathe, shave, and perform hair care. When assessing a patient's feet, the nurse notices that the toenails are thick and separated from the nail bed. What does the nurse most likely suspect is the cause of this condition? A. Fungi B. Friction C. Nail polish deep nail polish remover. Answer A. Fungi rationale. Inflammatory lesions and fungus of the nail bed cause thickened, horny nails that separate from the nail bed. Ask women whether they frequently polish their nails and use polish remover because chemicals in these products cause excessive nail dryness. Friction and pressure from ill-fitting or loose shoes causes keratosis corns. It is seen mainly on or between toes over bony prominences. The nurse is providing oral care to a patient. In which order will the nurse clean the oral cavity, starting with the first area? 1. Roof of mouth, gums, and inside cheek 2. Chewing and inner tooth surfaces 3. Outer tooth surfaces for tongue. Answer 2. Chewing and inner tooth surfaces 3. Outer tooth surfaces 1. Roof of mouth, gums, and inside cheek 4. 
tongue rationale. Oral care is provided in the following sequence. Clean chewing and inner tooth surfaces first. Clean outer tooth surfaces. Moisten brush with chlorhexidine rinse to rinse. Use tooth to clean the roof of mouth, gums, and inside cheeks. Gently brush tongue but avoid stimulating gag reflex. Rinse. is caring for an older adult patient with Alzheimer's disease who is ambulatory but requires total assistance with activities of daily living, ADLs. The nurse notices that the patient is eaten too less. Which area should the nurse assess? A. Assess oral cavity. B. Assess room for drafts. C. Assess ankles for edema. D. Assess for reduced sensations. Answer A. Assess oral cavity. Rationale. Eat in less means without teeth. Therefore, the nurse needs to assess the oral cavity. While older adults may want the room warmer and drafts should be avoided, this does not help with being eaten too less. Eat in less does not mean the patient has edema. While older adult patients can have reduced sensations, this is not the meaning of eaten too less. The nurse delegates needed hygiene care for an elderly stroke patient. Which intervention would be appropriate for the nurse assistant to accomplish during the bath? A. Checking distal pulses. B. Providing range of motion. Wrong. Exercises to extremities. C. Determining type of treatment for stage 1 pressure ulcer. D. Changing the dressing over an intravenous site. Answer, B, providing range of motion, ROM, exercises to extremities rationale, ROM may be delegated to assistant personnel. The other activities should be performed by the nurse. An 88-year-old patient comes to the medical clinic regularly. During a recent visit, the nurse noticed that the patient had lost 10 pounds in six weeks without being on a special diet. The patient tells the nurse that he has had trouble chewing his food. Which of the following factors are normal aging changes that can affect an older adult's oral health? Select all that apply. A. Dangers do not always fit properly. B. Most older adults have an increase in saliva secretions. C. With aging, the periodontal membrane becomes tighter and painful. D. Many older adults are eaten toothless and remaining teeth are often decayed. Eat the teeth of elderly patients are more sensitive to hot and cold. Answer, A. Dentures do not always fit properly. D. Many older adults are eaten toothless and remaining teeth are often decayed. Rationale, dentures or partial plates do not always fit properly causing pain and discomfort. Many older adults are eaten toothless without teeth and the teeth that are present are often diseased or decayed. An age-related decline in saliva secretion is common. The periodontal membrane weakens with aging, making the area prone to infection. Normally, aging does not affect temperature sensitivity. The nurse is caring for an elderly patient with Alzheimer's disease who is ambulatory but requires total assistance with his activities of daily living, ADLs. The nurse notices that his skin is dry and wrinkled. The nurse should A. Make sure that the patient is receiving daily baths. B. Reduce the number of baths per week if possible. C. Be aware that sweat glands become more active with aging. D. Be sure that the patient is using soap with his bath. Answer B. Reduce the number of baths per week if possible. Rationale. Decreasing the number of baths per week may help prevent further drying of the skin. As people age, the skin loses its resiliency and moisture, and sebaceous and sweat glands become less active. Daily bathing as well as bathing with water that is too hot or soap that is harsh causes the skin to become excessively dry. The nurse recognizes that her older adult patient needs additional teaching about skin care when the older adult says, I should A. Bathe twice a week. B. Rinse well after using soap. 
C. Use hot water for bathing. D. Drink plenty of fluids. Answer. C. Use hot water for bathing rationale. Hot water dries the skin by removing natural oils more quickly. The nurse is caring for a patient who has reduced sensation in both feet. Which of the following should the nurse do? Select all that apply. A. Avoid cleaning the feet until an order from the health care provider is received. B. Wash the feet with lukewarm water and then dry well. C. Apply moisturizing lotion to the feet, especially between the toes. D. File the toenails straight across. Answer B. Wash the feet with lukewarm water and then dry well. D. File the toenails straight across. Rationale. Lukewarm water limits potential for burns in the patient with reduced sensation. Drying limits moisture that promotes growth of microorganisms. Always clip and file nails straight across when ordered. An order is not needed to clean feet. Lotion between toes could cause maceration. Which of the following actions would best help prevent skin breakdown in a patient who is incontinent of stools and very weak and drowsy? A. Checking frequently for soil and B. Washing the perennial area with strong soap and water C. Placing the call light within easy reach D. Keeping a pad under the patient. Answer A. Checking frequently for soiling rationale. Loose stool contains digestive enzymes that irritate the skin and need to be cleaned from the skin as soon as possible after soiling to prevent skin breakdown. The nurse is caring for a patient who has multiple ticks on lower legs and body. What should the nurse do to rid the patient of ticks? A. Use blunt tweezers and pull upward with steady pressure. B. Burn the ticks with a match or small lighter. C. Allow the ticks to drop off by themselves. D. Apply myconazole and cover with plastic. Answer A. Use blunt tweezers and pull upward with steady pressure. Rationale. Using blunt tweezers grasp the tick as close to the head as possible and pull upward with even, steady pressure. Hold until the tick pulls out, usually for about 3 to 4 minutes. Save the tick in a plastic bag and put it in the freezer if necessary to identify the type of tick. Because ticks transmit several diseases to people, they must be removed. Allowing them to drop off by themselves is not an option. Do not burn ticks off with a match or lighter. Myconazole is used to treat athletes' foot. It is a fungal medication. Covering ticks with plastic does not remove ticks. The nurse is caring for a patient who is reporting severe foot pain due to corns. The patient has been using oval corn pads to self-treat the corns but they seem to be getting worse. Which information will the nurse share with the patient? A. Corn pads are inadequate treatment and should be continued. B. The patient should avoid soaking the feet before using a pumice stone. C. Depending on severity, surgery may be needed to remove the corns. D. Tighter shoes would help to compress the corns and make them smaller. Answer C. Depending on severity, surgery may be needed to remove the corns. Rationale. Surgical removal is necessary depending on severity of pain and the size of the corn. Oval corn pads should be avoided because they increase pressure on the toes and reduce circulation. Warm water soaks soften corns before gentle rubbing with a callus file or pumice stone. Wider and softer shoes, especially shoes with a wider toe box, are helpful. A nurse is providing a bath. In which order will the nurse clean the body, beginning with the first area? 1. Face 2. Eyes 3. Perineum 4. Arm and chest 5. Hands and nails 6. Back and buttock 7. Abdomen and legs. Answer 2. Eyes 1. 
Face 4, arm and chest 5, hands and nails 7, abdomen and legs 3, perineum 6. Back and buttocks rationale, the sequence for giving a bath is as follows, eyes, face, both arms, chest, hands, nails, abdomen, both legs, perineal hygiene, back and buttocks, anus. The nurse is providing oral care to an unconscious patient and notes that the patient has extremely bad breath. Which term will the nurse use when reporting to the oncoming shift? A. Chylitis B. Halitosis C. Glossitis D. Dental caries. Answer B. Halitosis rationale. Halitosis is the term for bad breath. Chylitis is the term for cracked lips. Dental caries are cavities in the teeth and could be a cause of the halitosis. Glossitis is the term for inflamed tongue. Mr. Epstein is too groggy to brush his own teeth. Ruth knows that it is important to keep his mouth clean to prevent infection. When performing oral care for Mr. Epstein, Ruth notices that his tongue is red and swollen. Which oral condition does he have? A. Halitosis B. Glossitis C. Alopecia D. Ceramon Answer B. Glossitis Rationale Glossitis is the condition of an inflamed tongue. You ask the nursing assistive personnel not to clean a patient who has been incontinent of urine. Several minutes later you pass the open door of the room and see the nap changing the patient's gown and linen. Which of the following requires your immediate attention? A. Room temperature is overly warm. B. Room door is open to the hallway. C. Television volume is too loud. D. Strong odor of urine is detected. Answer. B. Room door is open to the hallway. Rationale, this violates the patient's privacy. Although attention to the room temperature, noise level, and odor is required, the immediate concern is with privacy. The patient is diagnosed with athlete's foot tinea pedis. The patient says that he is relieved because it is only athlete's foot and it can be treated easily. Which information should the nurse consider when formulating a response to the patient? A. Contagious with frequent recurrences B. Helpful to air dry feet after bathing C. Treated with salicylic acid D. Caused by lice Answer A. Contagious with frequent recurrences Rationale Athlete's foot spreads to other body parts, especially the hands. It is contagious and frequently recurs. Drying feet well after bathing and applying powder help prevent infection. It is caused by a fungus, not lice, and is treated with applications of griseofulvin, myconazole, or tolnaptate. Plantar wars are treated with salicylic acid or electrodesiccation. The nurse is caring for a patient who refuses to bathe in the morning. When asked why, the patient says, I always bathe in the evening. Which action by the nurse is best? A. Defer the bath until evening and pass on the information to the next shift. B. Tell the patient that daily and morning baths are the normal routine. C. Explain the importance of maintaining morning hygiene practices. D. Cancel hygiene for the day and attempt again in the morning. Answer A. Defer the bath until evening and pass on the information to the next shift. Rationale. Allow the patient to follow normal hygiene practices change the bath to evening. Patients have individual preferences about when to perform hygiene and grooming care. Knowing the patient's personal preferences promotes individualized care for the patient. Hygiene care is never routine. Maintaining individual personal preferences is important unless the hygiene practices are indicated by an illness or condition. Canceling hygiene and trying again is not an option since the nurse already knows the reason for refusal. Adapting practices to meet individual needs is required.
A patient is being treated for cancer with weekly radiation therapy to the head and chemotherapy treatments. Which assessment is the priority? A. Feet B. Nail bed C. Perineum D. Oral cavity. Answer D. Oral cavity rationale. The oral cavity is the priority. Radiation to the head reduces salivary flow and lowers pH of saliva, leading to stomatitis and tooth decay. While chemotherapy drugs kill the normal cells lining the oral cavity, leading to ulcers and inflammation. While the feet, nail beds, and perineum are important, they are not as affected as the oral cavity with head or neck radiation and chemotherapy. A nurse uses long, firm strokes distal to proximal while bathing a patient's legs because a. it promotes venous circulation, b. it covers a larger area of the leg, c. it completes care in a timely fashion, d. it prevents blood clots in legs. Answer a. it promotes venous circulation. Rationale, bathing a patient with long, firm strokes distal to proximal promotes circulation and increases venous return. The nurse is providing oral care to an unconscious patient. Which action should the nurse take? A. Moisten the mouth using lemon glycerin sponges. B. Hold the patient's mouth open with gloved fingers. C. Use foam swabs to help remove plaque. D. Rinse the mouth and immediately suction the oral cavity. Answer. D. Rinse the mouth and immediately suction the oral cavity. Rationale. When providing oral hygiene to an unconscious patient, the nurse needs to protect him or her from choking and aspiration. Have two nurses provide care, one nurse does the actual cleaning, and the other caregiver removes secretions with suction equipment. The nurse can delegate nursing assistive personnel to participate. Some agencies use equipment that combines a mouth swab with the suction device. This device can be used safely by one nurse to provide oral care. Commercially made foam swabs are ineffective in removing plaque. Do not use lemon glycerin sponges because they dry mucous membranes and erode tooth enamel. While cleansing the oral cavity, use a small oral airway or padded tongue blade to hold the mouth open. Never use your fingers to hold the patient's mouth open. A human bite contains multiple pathogenic microorganisms. The patient is being treated for cancer with weekly radiation and chemotherapy treatments. The nurse is aware that the patient's oral mucosa needs to be assessed because chemotherapy and radiation can a. increase saliva production, b. decrease the risk of oral inflammation, c. decrease drying of oral mucosa, d. lead to oral problems. Answer D. Lead to oral problems rationale. Patients frequently develop common oral problems as a result of inadequate oral care or as a consequence of disease, e.g. oral malignancy or as a side effect of treatments such as radiation and chemotherapy. The nurse is caring for an unresponsive patient who has a nasogastric tube in place for continuous tube feedings. The nurse assesses the patient's oral hygiene because good oral hygiene A. Helps prevent gingivitis. B. May cause glossitis. C. May lead to halitosis. D. Causes tongue coating. Answer A. Helps prevent gingivitis rationale, early identification of poor oral hygiene practices and common oral problems reduces the risk for gum disease and dental caries. Patients frequently develop common oral problems as a result of inadequate oral care or as a consequence of disease, e.g. oral malignancy or as a side effect of treatments such as radiation and chemotherapy. 
These problems include receding gum tissue, inflamed gums, gingivitis, upcoated tongue, glossitis, inflamed tongue, discolored teeth, particularly along gum margins, dental caries, missing teeth, and halitosis, foul-smelling breath. The nurses providing education about the importance of proper foot care to a patient who has diabetes mellitus. The nurses understand that this is important for the patient because a. Plantar warts can develop from foot fungi. b. Poor foot care leads to neuropathy. c. a. a strong dorsalis pedis pulse indicates poor blood flow. d. Foot ulcers are the most common precursor to amputation. Answer D. Foot ulcers are the most common precursor to amputation rationale. Foot ulceration is the most common single precursor to lower extremity amputations among persons with diabetes. Plantar warts are due to the papillomavirus, not to a fungus. Palpation of the dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial pulses indicates that adequate blood flow is reaching peripheral tissues. Neuropathy is a degeneration of the peripheral nerves usually due to poor control of blood glucose levels. It is not a direct result of poor foot care. The nurse is caring for a patient with diabetes. Which task will the nurse assign to the nursing assistive personnel? A. Providing nail care B. Teaching foot care C. Making an occupied bed D. Determining aspiration risk. Answer C. Making an occupied bed rationale. The skill of making an occupied bed can be delegated to nursing assistive personnel. Nail care teaching foot care. And assessing aspiration risk of a patient with diabetes must be performed by the RN. These skills cannot be delegated. The nurse is providing education about the importance of proper foot care to a patient who has diabetes mellitus. Which primary goal is the nurse trying to achieve? A. Prevention of plantar warts B. Prevention of foot fungus C. Prevention of neuropathy D. Prevention of amputation Answer D. Prevention of amputation rationale. Foot ulceration is the most common single precursor to lower extremity amputations among persons with diabetes. Prevention of plantar warts and foot fungus are important but not the primary goal. Neuropathy is a degeneration of the peripheral nerves usually due to poor control of blood glucose levels. It is not a direct result of foot care. A nurse is preparing to provide hygiene care. Which principle should the nurse consider when planning hygiene care? A. Hygiene care is always routine and expected. B. No two individuals perform hygiene in the same manner. C. It is important to standardize a patient's hygienic practices. D. During hygiene care do not take the time to learn about patient needs. Answer B. No two individuals perform hygiene in the same manner. Rationale. No two individuals perform hygiene in the same manner. It is important to individualize the patient's care based on knowing about the patient's unique hygiene practices and preferences. Hygiene care is never routine. This care requires intimate contact with the patient and communication skills to promote the therapeutic relationship. In addition, during hygiene, the nurse should take time to learn about the patient's health promotion practices and needs, emotional needs, and health care education needs. A patient's hygiene schedule of bathing and brushing teeth is largely influenced by family customs. For which age group is the nurse most likely providing care? A. Adolescent B. Preschooler Toddler C. Older Adult D. Adult Answer B. 
preschooler, toddler rationale, family customs play a major role during childhood in determining hygiene practices such as the frequency of bathing, the time of day bathing is performed, and even whether certain hygiene practices such as brushing of the teeth or flossing are performed. As children enter adolescence, peer groups and media often influence hygiene practices. During the adult years, involvement with friends and work groups shape the expectations that people have about personal appearance. Some older adults' hygiene practices change because of changes in living conditions and available resources. A nursing assistive personnel NAP, is providing AM care to patients. Which action by the NAP will require the nurse to intervene? A. Not offering a back rub to a patient with fractured ribs B. Not offering to wash the hair of a patient with neck trauma C. Turning off the television while giving a back rub to the patient D. Turning patient's head with neck injury to side when giving oral care Answer D. Turning patient's head with neck injury to side when giving oral care rationale. The nurse must intervene if the nap turns the patient's head with a neck injury. This is contraindicated and must be stopped to prevent further injury. All the other actions are appropriate and do not need follow-up. Consult the medical record for any contraindications to a massage e.g. fractured ribs, burns, and heart surgery. Before washing a patient's hair. Determine that there are no contraindications to procedure, e.g., neck injury. When providing a back rub, enhance relaxation by reducing noise, turning off the television, and ensuring that the patient is comfortable. The nurse is preparing to provide a complete bed bath to an unconscious patient. The nurse decides to use a bad bath. In which order will the nurse clean the body, starting with the first area? 1. Neck, shoulders and chest 2. Abdomen and groin, perineum 3. Legs, feet and web spaces 4. Back of neck, back and then buttocks 5. Both arms, both hands, web spaces and axilla. Answer 1. Neck, shoulders and chest 5. Both arms, both hands, web spaces, and axilla 2. Abdomen and groin, perineum 3. Legs, feet, and web spaces 4. Back of neck, back, and then buttocks. The female nurse is caring for a male patient who is uncircumcised but not ambulatory and has full function of all extremities. The nurse is providing the patient with a partial bed bath. How should perineal care be performed for this patient? A. Should be postponed because it may cause embarrassment. B. Should be unnecessary because the patient is uncircumcised. C. Should be done by the patient. D. Should be done by the nurse. Answer. C. Should be done by the patient rationale. If a patient is able to perform perineal self-care, encourage this independence. Patients most in need of perennial care are those at greatest risk for acquiring an infection such as uncircumcised males. Perennial care is necessary. Embarrassment should not cause the nurse to overlook the patient's hygiene needs. The nurse should provide this care only if the patient is unable to do so. The nurse is preparing to provide a complete bed bath to an unconscious patient. The nurse decides to use a bad bath. She does this for which of the following reasons? A. Wash basins can harbor gram-negative organisms. B. Bag baths use soaps that enhance cleansing. C. Bag baths do not contain emollients. D. Bag baths increase skin, flaking and scaling. Answer A. Wash basins can harbor gram-negative organisms rationale uh, when wash basins are not cleaned and dried completely after use. The risk of contamination by gram-negative organisms is introduced. Successive uses of the wash basin cause the patient's skin to harbor more gram-negative organisms. Bag baths do not contain soap.
Instead, they contain a no-rinse surfactant, a humectant to trap moisture, and an emollient that significantly reduces overall skin dryness, especially skin flaking and scaling. A self-sufficient bedridden patient is unable to reach all body parts. Which type of bath will the nurse assign to the nursing assistive personnel? A. Bag bath B. Sponge bath C. Partial bed bath D. Complete bed bath. Answer C. Partial bed bath rationale. A partial bath consists of washing body parts that the patient cannot reach including the back and providing a back rub. Dependent patients in need of partial hygiene or self-sufficient bedridden patients who are unable to reach all body parts receive a partial bed bath. Complete bed baths are administered to totally dependent patients in bed. The bag bath contains several soft, non-woven cotton cloths that are pre-moistened in a solution of no-rinse surfactant cleanser and emollient. The sponge bath involves bathing from a bath basin or a sink with the patient sitting in a chair. After the patient's bath, the nurse should a. not offer a back rub because it is not therapeutic, b. routinely give back rubs of two minutes or less, c. assume that all patients need back rubs after their bath, d. not offer a back rub for 48 hours after coronary artery bypass surgery. Answer D. Not offer a back rub for 48 hours after coronary artery bypass surgery rationale. Consult the medical record for any contraindications to a massage, e.g. fractured ribs, burns, heart surgery. A back rub of 3 minutes duration actually enhances patient comfort and relaxation and thus is very therapeutic. It is important to ask whether a patient would like a back rub because some individuals dislike physical contact. The nurse is caring for a patient who has undergone surgery for a broken leg and has a cast in place. What should the nurse do to prevent skin impairment? A. Assess surfaces exposed to the edges of the cast for pressure areas. B. Keep the patient's blood pressure low to prevent overperfusion of tissue. C. Do not allow turning in bed because that may lead to redislocation of the leg. D. Restrict the patient's dietary intake to reduce the number of times on the bedpan. Answer A. Assess surfaces exposed to the edges of the cast for pressure areas. Rationale, assess surfaces exposed to cast cloth restraints, bandages and dressings, tubing, or orthopedic devices. An external device applied to or around the skin exerts pressure or friction on the skin, leading to skin impairment. When restricted from moving, dependent body parts are exposed to pressure that reduces circulation to affected tissues promoting pressure ulcers. Patients with limited caloric and protein intake develop impaired or delayed wound healing. Keeping the blood pressure artificially low may decrease arterial blood supply, leading to ischemia and breakdown. Which action by the nurse will be the most important for preventing skin impairment in a mobile patient with local nerve damage? A. Insert an indwelling urinary catheter. B. Limit caloric and protein intake. C. Turn the patient every two hours. D. Assess for pain during a bath. Answer. D. Assess for pain during a bath. Rationale. During a bath, assess the status of sensory nerve function by checking for touch pain, heat, cold, and pressure. When restricted from moving freely, dependent body parts are exposed to pressure that reduces circulation. However, this patient is mobile and therefore is able to change positions. Limiting caloric and protein intake may result in impaired or delayed wound healing. A mobile patient can use bathroom facilities or a urinal and does not need a urinary catheter. A nurse is providing perennial care to a female patient. Which washing technique will the nurse use? A. Back to front B. 
in a circular motion circa from pubic area to rectum D, upward from rectum to pubic area. Answer, circa from pubic area to rectum rationale. Cleansing from pubic area to rectum front to back reduces the transfer of microorganisms to the urinary meatus and decreases the risk of urinary tract infection. Cleansing from rectum to pubic area or back to front increases the risk of urinary tract infection. Circular motions are used in male perennial care. The nurse is providing a complete bed bath to a patient using a commercial bath cleansing pack bag bath. What should the nurse do? A. Rinse thoroughly. B. Allow the skin to air dry. C. Do not use a bath towel. D. Dry the skin with a towel. Answer B. Allow the skin to air dry. Rationale. The nurse should allow the skin to air dry for 30 seconds. Drying the skin with a towel removes the emollient that is left behind after the water cleanser solution evaporates. It is permissible to lightly cover the patient with a bath blanket or towel to prevent chilling. Do not rinse when using a bag bath. A nurse is providing AM care to patients. Which action will the nurse take? A. Soaks feed a patient with peripheral vascular disease. B. Applies CHG solution to wash perineum of patient with a stroke. C. Cleanses eye from outer canthus to inner canthus of patient with diabetes. D. Uses a long firm stroke to wash legs of patient with blood clotting disorder. Answer B. Applies CHG solution to wash perineum of patient with a stroke rationale. CHG is safe to use on the perineum and external mucosa. If patient has diabetes or peripheral vascular disease with impaired circulation and or sensation, do not soak feet. Maceration of skin may predispose to infection. Do not use long, firm strokes to wash the lower extremities of patients with history of deep vein thrombosis or blood clotting disorders. Use short, light strokes instead. I should be cleansed from the inner to outer canthus on all patients. When providing the patient with a complete bed bath using soap and water, not a bag bath, it is important to A. Use alkaline soaps to help prevent infection. B. Towel dry completely to prevent maceration. C. To use soap liberally when cleansing the eyes. D. Cleanse the eye from outer canthus to inner canthus. Answer B. Towel dry completely to prevent maceration. Rationale, moisture and sediment that collect in skin folds predispose skin to maceration. Towel dry to prevent maceration. Soap irritates the eyes. Use of separate sections of the mitt reduces infection transmission. Bathing the eye from inner to outer canthus prevents secretions from entering the nasolacrimal duct. Alkaline soap residue is irritating to skin and can decrease the normal protectiveness of acid pH. The nurse is teaching the patient about flossing and oral hygiene. Which instruction will the nurse include in the teaching session? A. Using waxed floss prevents bleeding. B. Flossing removes plaque and tartar from the teeth. C. Performing flossing at least three times a day is beneficial. D. Applying toothpaste to the teeth before flossing is harmful. Answer B. Flossing removes plaque and tartar from the teeth. Rationale. Dental flossing removes plaque and tartar between teeth. To prevent bleeding, the patient should use unwaxed floss. Flossing once a day is sufficient. If toothpaste is applied to the teeth before flossing, fluoride will come in direct contact with tooth surfaces aiding in cavity prevention. Which instruction will the nurse provide to the nursing assistive personnel when providing foot care for a patient with diabetes? A. Do not place slippers on the patient's feet. B. Trim the patient's toenails daily. 
C. Report sores on the patient's toes. D. Check the brachial artery. Answer. C. Report sores on the patient's toes. Rationale. Report any changes that may indicate inflammation or injury to tissue. Do not allow the diabetic patient to go barefoot. Injury can lead to amputations. Clipping toenails is not allowed. Patients with peripheral vascular disease or diabetes mellitus often require nail care from a specialist to reduce the risk of infection. When assessing the patient's feet, the nurse palpates the dorsalis pedis of the foot, not the brachial artery. The debilitated patient is resisting attempts by the nurse to provide oral hygiene. Which action will the nurse take next? A. Insert an oral airway. B. Place the patient in a flat, supine position. C. Use undiluted hydrogen peroxide as a cleaner. D. Quickly proceed while not talking to the patient. Answer A. Insert an oral airway. Rationale. If the patient is uncooperative or is having difficulty keeping the mouth open, insert an oral airway. Insert it upside down and then turn the airway sideways and over the tongue to keep the teeth apart. Do not use force. Position the patient on his or her side or turn the head to allow for drainage. Placing the patient in a flat, supine position could lead to aspiration. Hydrogen peroxide is irritating to mucosa, even though the patient is debilitated. Explain the steps of mouth care and the sensations that he or she will feel. Also tell the patient when the procedure is completed. The nurse is providing perennial care to an uncircumcised male patient. Which action will the nurse take? A. Leave the foreskin alone because there is little chance of infection. B. Retract the foreskin for cleansing and allow it to return on its own. C. Retract the foreskin and return it its natural position when done. D. Leave the foreskin retracted. Answer. C. Retract the foreskin and return it its natural position when done. Rationale. Return the foreskin to its natural position. Keeping the foreskin retracted leads to tightening of the foreskin around the shaft of the penis causing local edema and discomfort. The foreskin may not return to its natural position on its own. Patients at greatest risk for infection are uncircumcised males. A nurse is assessing a patient's skin. Which patient is most at risk for impaired skin integrity? A. A patient who is afebrile B. A patient who is diaphoretic C. A patient with strong pedal pulses D. A patient with adequate skin turgor. Answer. B. A patient who is diaphoretic rationale. Excessive moisture, diaphoretic, on the surface of the skin serves as a medium for bacterial growth and causes irritation, softens epidermal cells, and leads to skin maceration. A patient who is afebrile is not a high risk. However, a patient who is febrile, fever, is prone to skin breakdown. A patient with strong pedal pulses is not a high risk. However, a patient with vascular insufficiency is. A patient with adequate skin turgor is not a high risk. However, a patient with poor skin turgor is.